Greetings. I thought I would start out today rewarding the people who come on time with another treat. You get to vote. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> okay. Uh, but before anybody else comes in, uh, I'm going to allow you to vote on when you want the term papers to be due. Now, now I thought you do everything democratically in this society. So you have a choice. You can vote for either Monday, the 12th, 13th, 14th, or Wednesday, the 16th. You, we don't have any votes for any of those? Oh, okay, now, all right. All in favor of Monday, the 14th, please raise your hand. <laughs> All in favor of Wednesday the 16th, please raise your hand. Wait a minute. What's the what kind of a democracy is this? We don't. Have? Okay. Um, everyone else, raise your hand. <laughs> what are you in favor of, Scott? You're not. You're just an auditor. It doesn't matter. I'm in favor of tomorrow. You're in favor of tomorrow. Okay. Scott is going to make a lot of friends. Okay. Well. Uh, so we had one who wanted it on, on Monday. What was the reason? Uh, well, that's not fair. Somebody voted for Monday just to, what? Why not Monday? Get it over with. Oh, okay. Right. Doesn't matter. Okay. So uh, I'll uh, um, take them on Wednesday then. Um, uh, let's see. That's um, 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Uh, in, in in my office, Pacific Standard Time. Excuse me, I always make that mistake. Pacific Standard Time in my office in Margaret Jacks Hall, um, and uh, or to get to the TA uh, somehow. Is, are you are you guys still around? Yeah. So if you can't find my office, you can find him. Okay. So Alan, that's uh, do a week from Wednesday. Two weeks from Wednesday is when uh, two, two weeks from the previous Wednesday is when your term papers do. Okay. Now, my main topic for today, however, is something that uh, we haven't talked about this quarter, and that is computer programs that are supposed to help you in your writing. Um, and uh, what I'm going to talk about today is not the state of the art. I'm talking about programs that have been been around for a long time, the ones that the ones that uh, showed the first results, uh, because we don't have the state of the art ones here on campus. They cost money. And uh, nobody uh, has, has paid for, has paid for them. It's particularly the one that I wish I could have tried on the sample text. There's a on, on newer versions of Unix. There's a program called Sexist, which will look over your text and and suggest how you could improve the writing so that you would avoid sexist, possibly sexist terminology. And uh, I thought that would be interesting to apply that to some classic uh, uh, some classic documents. However. Um, also to my own writing, of course. But um, uh, unfortunately, I have an example of, uh, of that to show you. But um, I'm sure that it would also be an aid like the ones that I'll, that I'll be talking about here. Um, I guess since I raised the issue of sexism, I should mention that I was once quoted in the London Times for, for saying that it, it wasn't professional to talk about mother and daughter in a tree structure as father and son in a tree structure, and and uh, I had a lot of irate mail after that point, and uh, and uh, people are a, a little more um, what do you call it? Um, uh, it, it well, at at the time, um, you couldn't tell a joke about about such things, and, and people aren't quite as uptight about. It issues anymore, although they're still difficult and important. Um, now, uh, so there's, there's two programs on Navajo that I used called Style and Diction. And, uh, and I suppose that a lot of Unix systems have these. And these are, these are, old, these are fairly, uh, as I said, uh, introduced uh, quite a while ago. I don't know the date on this. On, on this. Whoa, I'm sorry, I took it away from you, Eddie. Um, I don't know what the date on this is, but this is, uh, uh, but and this just describes uh, probably not the very first, the first manual on it. But there's, but these two programs, um, uh, you can feed them any any uh, 
any file, any ASCII file whatsoever, and it gives you, gives you numbers out saying uh, how readable it was and things like that. Uh, um, and the uh, and uh, as you can expect, these numbers aren't 100% um, reliable. Um, but it's but uh, and so we'll, as we look at these programs, you'll you'll see that uh, obviously the, the the superficial things that these programs do. Um, are way below what any what any human being would ever do reading reading the text. Uh, still, um, I think they're they're useful for two reasons. One is um, it's kind of fun, <laughs> uh, but secondly, um, it's always useful to have some 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 excuse to read your document from another point of view. And so so this will this will single out a sentence and it'll say you know this sentence uh, was 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 unreadable for some reason or other or should be improved and maybe the sentence w uh, maybe the computer is wrong about it but it's but it's still it, it, it pointed out that sentence to you which you might not have thought about again and, and you'll get a, you'll get a better idea anyway even if the computer was wrong about it I mean this reminds me again of a story that Feynman told he was he was asked uh, to to go to Oak Ridge and uh, and and uh, in the, during the war and check on the the, um, the 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 plans for developing this this uranium processing plant there, and um, and he really he says he didn't really understand what was what he, he got these huge blueprints and so on. He really didn't know what it was about. But he he looked at the guy and he put his finger down and said, "Oh, well, what what's this here?" And the guy looked at it and said, "Oh my goodness, we shouldn't have had those two things in the same room or something like this, you know." And, and um, so now, now uh, you know, just a complete blind pointing to the thing, you know, but th but that that helps. And so, so uh, it's useful to have a tool like this, even if it's e even if it's uh, uh, not 100% right. Now, it, but it is it it isn't completely 100% wrong either. Uh, but even if it were if it were completely random, it might be useful sometimes to to, to do it. Um, okay. Now let's take a look at then at uh, at what it is. I, I have I made a whole bunch of um, sample text. And the first one that I want to show you is from from a, a, church, a, a textbook by Alonzo Church called Introduction to Mathematical Logic. Uh, Tracy picked this out on, of my bookshelf as one that that looked like we could use as a reasonable one for studying with Brand X. And now this is a book that I used as a text, uh, so that was you know so it's probably not, not used anymore these these days. Although Tracy apparently had seen it. Um, and um, it has a very ponderous introduction. Now, the the, the introduction, the first chapter, is something that um, uh, uh, anyway, it's it's, uh, it's, it's well written uh, as far as as far as grammar is concerned. You, you you can't look at any of the sentences and say there's a, there, there are real there are real flaws in, in the sentences. But it's ponderous. It goes on and lumbers along, um, and the sentences are. Are uh, longer and more complicated than would be necessary to make the points that he's making. On the other hand, almost all, essentially all textbooks were were like that at the time. Um, so anyway, here we have a here we have an example of his uh, thing. And so now I'll show you computer output. So we're running style on on this, and um, so I'm running Navajo as I said, and I read in the church uh, excerpt here. So it gives a readability grade. And it actually gives readability grades, and it has four of them here. And, and these are on a on a level of uh, what grade level you are. And so this would be a 14th, almost a 15th grade student. That's uh, what uh, junior in college, right? And this one um, goes a little past senior level, right? On, on this, there's there are four different ways of computing these scores, and I'll show you what they are. So you see, there's simple correlations on two variables. That are that are that are completely linear. So the Kincaid formula here gives you the reading grade in the following: you count syllables per word, multiply by 11.8, add 0.39 times words per sentence, and divide by and, and subtract uh, this other constant here. So this is you know a typical thing you get out of an auto a, a linear regression uh, uh, analyzer. You give some points. And, um, they 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 started out uh, Navy training manuals they were using here. Um, and and so people had, so had 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 rated them and saying this is grade level five, this is grade level ten, and so on for each one. Um, and then um, uh, and then uh, uh, you tried to find the best fit 
of the fu of a function of the form a x plus b y plus c equals grading level done by the by the uh, by the people who assign the levels, and this was the were the best constants uh, in the in the sense of least squares or something like this. Uh, now the next one is the the auto what they call auto automatic automated readability index. And this was based on text from grade zero to seven. Boy, the grade zero would have been something. And, and uh, here they, here they, instead of syllables per word, they're using letters per word. They, they wanted a formula that was easier to 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 do. You didn't have to know what a syllable was. Um, and um, uh, you know, there's ways of there's algorithms for counting syllables that are fairly reliable based on uh, on vowels and and certain patterns. Um, but that this is uh, letters per word is certainly they can count that easily enough. And words per sentence again. And uh, so you get another score here. And then the third formula is um, uh, is by people who decided they would, instead of talking about words per sentences, they were going to talk about the reciprocal um, and a times a constant, which is sentences per hundred words. Um, and then they give a they give a score uh, based on that and letters per word. And then there's a final score here, which is a real, which is which has a, starts out with a 206.8. It look, makes it look kind of flaky. It's, it's, it's not too, uh, it's amazingly uh, robust uh, in the example that we had. It didn't give us any re readings that were way off scale. Uh, but uh, you subtract syllables per word and words per sentence. It's similar, but uh, with a negative thing uh, in here. So, so uh, um, strange. Anyway, we got these. Or maybe they rescaled it after. I'm not sure. Anyway, those are four. Those are four things, and you get all four of them. And they say that uh, for for things that uh, uh, for normal technical paper, they had felt that the Kincaid rating, the one that they give first, tends to be the most uh, um, correlates the best with their own experience at the Bell Labs. This is by Lorinda Cherry, who, uh, who who did most of this work. Uh, Are we supposed to be seeking to minimize or maximize these numbers? Uh, you're, sp uh, you're, you're supposed to say what your what kind of a grade level you're you're shooting for. Um, and uh, usually, though, if you're shooting for, I, I would try to minimize. In other words, I would say, um, unless I unless I'm really trying to, uh, uh, to 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 make the reader think that this, you know, that you know, well, certainly if if I got too too small, I would probably be uh, uh, defeating my purpose too. Uh, if I if I wrote entire, you know, suppose I made all, all my sentences four words long, you know, and three words per sentence, uh, three letters per word, or something like this, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, we could we could um, we could minimize this. In fact, I I do have a, an example of that um, uh, coming up, where I where I tried where I tried to minimize these scores, but that's that's what you're, you're you're stealing my 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 thunder there. Um, now, anyway, Church was rated here about 15th grade level. Okay. Now, then it says number of sentences, how many words were there, the average length of sentences. Mary Claire talked about this. She, he's got 31 word sentences. Okay. Um, the uh, then it has the average length of a word uh, is is uh, is a little less than five letters. That's that's not especially long. But then you, then you, you you subtract out. Here it says n number of non-functional words, and these are the words that aren't in um, that aren't the uh, words like the and and on above uh, uh, which and that all the words that are used for grammar uh, the non-functional words are the words that have uh, semantic content about the actual subject and uh, and the average length of those is 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 typically more more relevant to, uh, than the average length of the of the, the words including the functional words so so this was these would tend to be longer of course and then he talked the shortest sentence was. Uh, a short sentence is 17%. Only one example. This is a, this is too bad. This is a this is actually a, a small sample size. Here we had only six sentences, uh, but it doesn't looks like they were all pretty long um, in this particular case. The longest sentence was uh, 39 words. The shortest sentence was 22 words, but the average was 31. So they all clustered. Or they didn't spread out very much in length. Then, he, then they classifies them into types of sentences of four in four kinds and. Uh, um, simple, depending on how many clauses they have, and uh, I won't go into the exact details of this, but there's, but it does some some analysis as to as to as to what variety there is in sentence structure, and the and the way they do this mostly is by studying uh, by classifying every part of the sentence into uh, type type of word and grammar and so on, and so they they look at. Uh, 
uh, how many times you used infinitives, for example, in verbs, um, and uh, uh, passives. How many times was the uh, uh, 42% of your non-infinitive verbs were passive in this case instead of active? Um, and uh, so we give uh, uh, then types as percentage of the total words. So he, he used 12% pre prepositions, 5% conjunctions, 7% ad adverbs, you know, 23% nouns, adjectives, pronouns. And then they have something called nominalizations. I'm not going to say much more about it, but these are words that include shun, meant, ship, and other things in there. He just does a pattern match, and, 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 and if there's a certain certain um, combinations of letters in there, he, call, he thinks it's a nominalization, and that might be a, uh, and if you have a high percentage of those, that you might be uh, doing a high, you might be writing in high engineerese. Um, sentence beginnings says, how do you open your sentences? And, uh, and uh, we got uh, uh, only six sentences here, so there's not much of a sample, but we, he once with a noun, once with a pronoun, once with an adjective, once with a preposition, once with an adverb. Uh, pretty good variety, isn't it? All different. Uh, but more, usually with a subject. Anyway, that's the, and then he has this funny thing here. Uh, the uh, people who wrote style have a funny thing that they call expletives. And you can even run this with a switch that will print out all the sentences that, that begin with expletives. Now, um, um, any of us who are familiar with the Watergate days will realize that uh, expletives are supposed to be deleted, right? Um, but uh, uh, I looked this up in, in, uh, in Longman's Dictionary, and they, don't use the, and they certainly don't have the same usage of this word. But what they mean here in expletives is just that you started the, the, the sentence with the word it or there. And you're just this sort of a uh, you know it started with this, this, you say it is natural that or there. Okay, now let's take a look at some examples for, that that came out. So this one begins with expletive. It was in April. This, by the way, isn't from church. This is from Paul's notes of one of my of, of, for this course here. It was in April 1977 that Don's travels with S.A. They 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 changed some letters to lowercase. And others too. And I don't. I haven't figured out exactly the algorithm for this. Um, prompted, but but uh, this is essay was con converted to to lowercase by the system. Prompted him to investigate typesetting for himself. And then they put a they put a they, they separate out um, punctuation to when you see the sentences the way that these programs are analyzing. And there that year he designed the first draft of te <laughs> and. Um, and another thing they do is they look for a, a uppercase letter following a lowercase letter, and they break that into two words. Probably they're looking at Unix program, uh, C programs or something where pe where people do this. I don't know, but they 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 break that into two words. It's definitely not in the source. And spent his sabbatical uh, and ten more years perfecting it. These these parentheses are not studied by these programs at all. They, I, I think they just uh, they just consider it a punctuation and don't do much with it except they except for matching for. Uh, they have some patterns that the, that the other program, the, the diction program, looks at. Um, putting volume four of ACP on the back burner, ACP again, lowercase. Okay, sentence length, 49. That includes one for TE and one for X, if you count them, you know. Um, so, you, so you get penalized for that as an extra word on that, Paul. But, okay, compound complex sentence. So this is considered compound complex. It, it's, the, it's the highest of the categories of the sentence complexity. Uh, and it says, begins with expletive, it. <laughs> he didn't really begin with what I would call an expletive. Uh, I didn't leave this in. Yes, right. Well, next time we're going to have an expletive that I'll delete. Okay. Now, here's another one from Tracy. After a brief but charming musical prelude, Don demonstrated to us that we are not alone in being concerned with the mechanics of writing. And this was, this was called passive voice. Uh, a sentence that had passive in it. begins with a preposition. You see, it begins with after. Uh, but passive voice, not the demonstrated, that's active. Uh, not that we are not alone, that's active. But in being concerned is passive. So it caught the passive there. And so if there's a passive anywhere in the sentence, it'll, it'll, it'll claim you got passive. And then it'll, you can run it with the minus P switch, which, which uh, prints out all things that, all sentences that have passive in um, now, here's one that says, um, oh, this is, um, this is from um, uh, Concrete Math, the chapter that I showed you some weeks ago, 
about binomial coefficients. I showed you some excerpts of it near the beginning of this course. So we, we use the same argument we used last chapter in showing that blah is the number of permutations of n object. Now, in, when I made this, uh, when I made this text, this is another one of the texts here. Uh, where, ooh, where is it? Ah, I got to keep my files in order. Okay, this is binomial two. Um, this comes. What I did for this example. I this is a, I, I showed you this chapter once before. Remember that we we took a look at this first paragraph and Mary Claire said I didn't have a, my commas right and stuff. Um, and what I do every time I get to a math formula, I change it to blah. But if it's displayed, I change it to display. And so uh, and, and and unless it's a, a real short formula, only one letter long, like K, and then it, then I just left it as K. Uh, so. Uh, um, uh, this is uh, uh, not going to teach anybody binomial coefficients, but it, it, the, these formulas would only have confused that program. And, they, and they, 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 the, the fact that the, you know, the program automatically starts out and, and has a, something called DROF that, that takes out all the, uh, all the TROF typesetting instructions uh, and, and equations that are in it. Um, so at least I put in a word instead of the, these equations would ordinarily have just been deleted the, the way they normally run these programs. This thing. But anyway, this is the this is a um, chapter on binomial coefficient, and and I'm going to compare this. I call this binome two. I compare this with binome one, which is um, the first, which is from my volume one of the Art of Computer Programming, where I introduced binomial coefficients, uh, and the uh, binome two was sort of a rewrite of, of of binome one 20 years later. So so this is uh, uh, you know, the, but by the same conventions I used for the 1960. Five version as for the 1985, 87 version. Okay, um, so so display blah and all this goes in. Okay, so that's the now here's a sentence that comes out of that one, um, and it just shows a little more of what this program is doing inside. It put the it it, it considered argument and permutations to be nominalizations. That's what it means by nominalizations. Uh, a word that contains shun is always a nominalization, and a word that contains meant. It, I don't think those are bad words particularly, but they might have been if I had a lot of other mints and shuns in there. Okay. We use the same arguments we used last chapter showing that law is a number of permutations of n objects. Sentence like 21, complex, because uh, it has, you know, extra clauses. Um, readability, nine, ninth grade level, and begins with a pronoun. We. Pronoun. Right. Amazing. There are n choices for the first element of the sequence. For each, there are blah choices for the second. Must be n choose one, right? And so on until no n minus one choices for the second and so on until there are blah choices for the k. Sentence length 31 compound complex expletive starts with there. You see readability 13th grade level begins with expletive. Uh, well, you can see some of the so so it, it, there's a very rudimentary uh, computer analysis going on here, which is classifying these things and then they print up a whole bunch of statistics. Now let me show you then the the statistics that I got on my samples and I'll tell you more about the samples. Uh, I got, oh, I don't know, a dozen samples here. And the first one I showed you, church, and we had 14.7 and all this. The next one sample I called goo. Now here, I just wanted to, uh, you know, you, computer programs don't mind if you give them, if you give them input that might, might bore a human being. Um, this was, <laughs> this was my, my sem sentence here. All right. Now, um, now, if you like the question mark at the end, okay. Yeah, well, you know, but it's pretty easy to do this with a text editor. Okay, now, um, all right. So this this was seventh grade level by the Kincaid score, but minus two point six um, in the uh, auto index level. So we were able to get pretty good. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. So there we are. All right. Now the next. Uh, um, I, I'm not. It, it turned out that that it gave us scores for the whole for all these things, but but the rest of them weren't were just cluttering up the data. So I, I only left goo in at the top here. Uh, now the next one, Tracy, is the is from the class notes that she wrote that day that we saw the beginning of, um, with the charming musical prelude, and then Paul is an, is a what is an example of Paul's class notes um, that you've also read. It's 
starts out the story. So far, readers will recall that our hero, Prof. Don, is locked in Mortal Kombat with Scientific American, a journal, etc. Editorial hubris, wonderful sentence. <coughs> um, that's Paul, that was Paul. And then Binomial 1, Binomial 2, I explained. Those are, the, those are um, from 1965, 6 and 1960, 1980, 6, 7. Uh, then I have Hash. Hash is is uh, from volume three of the Art of Computer Programming, uh, done in the same style as, as Binome, but it's, uh, but it's a less, uh, less mathematical description. It's, a, it's talking about um, algorithms more than mathematics, and so I, I wondered if this would be su substantially different. And besides, I wrote volume three about five years later after, after I'd finished volume one, uh, the, this part of volume three anyway. So, um, uh, so here we're talking about um, you know, we got blahs and displays occasionally, but not as not as often. And it's talking about uh, it's introducing the subject of hashing. And there's references and stuff too in here. It just in. All right. Next is um, tech. Tech is from the tech book. This is something that I wrote um, that that I wrote uh, 1982, 1983. Uh, so hash itself was written 1971, 72. So that represents 10-year period between between that and tech. And this is from the chapter that Jeff referred to briefly in his talk uh, about uh, macros. And I guess Leslie referred to it a little bit, so I thought it was a, it was the, the right chapter to select here. It's chapter 21 or something of the book, so it's not at the beginning where you would expect the more simple chapters to be. Um, and this is uh, so. This is. Uh, uh, similar here now, I, when, but here I put a backslash in because uh, this would count as a five-letter word because I'm referring to a a, a, a a symbol here. I don't know how that got through. I usually replace that by blah. Okay, then Job is another one. Um, I'm writing. I'm working on weekends on a, on a book that has to do with religion, and I uh, wondered if the style of my writings about theology would be quite different from the style of writings about mathematics and so I tried that so here's a here's a uh, um, you know it's a description of uh, the book of job and so on so I so there's uh, there's that then uh, withering heights is the last is the name. withering heights is is of course Charlotte Bronte and I just happen to have it online at sale and Grimm's fairy tales. We took the first fairy tale of Grimm. So let's take a look at the. I took a sort of a Withering Heights. I took a random chapter from near the middle, or, or no, not too far into the book. Well, here's the way Withering Heights looks. Um, notice that uh, there's a lot. It's first person. It's, taught, it's told by the the woman who, uh, Mr. Heathcliff. Uh, uh, it's where it is Heathcliff. So, so, so you win on readability when you have I because it's one-letter word, and you lose when you have Heathcliff and so on, according to these formulas. Um, <clears throat> okay, but that's the um, that's Withering Heights, and then um, Grimm's fairy tale. Let's see. Uh, looks like this. It's so charming. Um, and, in olden times, when wishing still helped one, there lived a king whose daughters were all beautiful, but the youngest was so beautiful that the sun itself, which has never seen so much, was astonished whenever it shone in her face. And this is the first uh, fairy tale in Grimm's fairy tales. It is no giant, but a disgusting frog. Um, and it ends with Faithful Henry, and Master was set free and was happy. It's a happy ending. Okay, and then the other one, the final one is is this one by um, one of my heroes, Colin Higgins, Harold and Maud. This is from the beginning, I believe, of Harold and Maud. Harold Jason kept up on the chair and placed the noose about his neck and miss and so on. Now, Harold and Maud is quite different style from these other ones. It's a, she paused. Yeah. Uh, okay. I have a sore throat, he said softly. Oh, well. Now, 
Um, now, now we look at the grading at the at the reading levels that we got from this. You see, uh, uh, Harold and Mons comes up at fifth grade, fourth grade reading level on these on these scores. Interesting. Um, Grimm's fairy tales, um, appropriately for children, I guess, comes in at seventh, eighth, eighth, ninth grade level. Wuthering Heights was a, was a sophomore high school. Um, and uh, surprisingly, of all my writing that I my mine, which is the binomial one two hash these five in the middle here, um, the uh, the one about theology was what was by far was noticeably um, less opaque in the uh, in the readability in the indices. Uh, um, and I looked at it again to see if I was you know what it is. But uh, what, usually, when you talk about your own field, you you. Uh, uh, you tend to be more obscure than if you're talking about a field that you're not n normally <laughs> normally in, I suppose. Um, now, uh, so the um, uh, the, cha the difference in 20, 20 25 years, or 20 years, I guess, for binomial coefficients was not substantial. Uh, uh, explaining the same material at a more le leisurely pace, but still uh, 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 about the same, the sentence was about the same. And when I had when I came to hashing. Um, it was actually, uh, and the textbook itself. They, these are these are, uh, you know, college freshman, high school uh, high school level text. They had an example. In, they have an example now in um, in, in the uh, here of uh, they ran it on article by Kernahan and Mashey about Unix, and uh, this one came in at 12.3, 12.8. Now, um, so. So uh, that's a reasonable score uh, anywhere in the in, in those levels. And uh, as I said, uh, Church's book was not was not at all be, uh, uh, ugly to read or any in, in any way. The sentences are kind of musical and uh, so on. It just was, uh, it, but it was definitely a uh, the sentences were more complicated one by one. Uh, by these formulas. Okay. Now let's see. Sentence info. Average length of sentence. You see, so Church had 32, and um, in these other texts that we're looking at, and, and I, I consider that the uh, that most of these specimens of writing are are uh, are, 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 are uh, sort of good examples. Um, and um, Mary Claire said that she would like to see sentences averaging a length between 15 and 18. Uh, roughly, it says that. But some remember she said ought to be, you ought to have the, sh the long sentences so that you can de-emphasize points as well as the short sentences that 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 emphasize points. You can't be shouting all the all the while. Um, and and uh, so um, uh, so well, these are a little on the high, you know. You remember, church was on the high side. We, these are a bit. These are. Uh, uh, a little on the high side here, my 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 TAs, but they're just taking notes of what I'm saying, so it's probably they have to be long winded. Um, and uh, in hashing, notice I was up there pretty high, um, and uh, and uh, with Job I was down right in the right in the right range, and and Harold and Maud, 10.8. Wow, that's way low. Uh, that that's the style of the of the of the story, of course. Okay, num uh, now the average length of of words is pretty is pretty. Uh, our church tended to use longer words than everybody else, but the rest of it was pretty was pretty straight. Uh, here. Um, short sentences. Um, what's this? This is different statistics from the church I showed you before. I'm sorry, we had two drafts of church. I added more sentences in in the final. I, I typed in a couple more paragraphs because the sample size was 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 small, and then I, I, I ran it again. So so this is this is the readability for 14.7. When we first looked at this on the previous page, it was um, the previous page was 14.9. So so it, we I took a larger sample and I you know moved moved the number a little bit. Okay. So anyway, this is yeah. So so now Church has has a, a more where are we? Short sentences. He has uh, he has a few short sentences and long sentences by this criterion. The 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 uh, the way the, the program decides between short and long is based on your average, and and uh, you, ha you have to deviate the significant from your average or something in order to be classified short. Like for Harold and Maud, a short sentence was less than six words. For Church, a short sentence was less than 27 words. Okay. Um, and uh, now. Uh, so we had a reasonably good variety then in these examples, as far as I can see. Um, there was a dearth here of long sentences in Paul's 
writing and uh, and in Harold and Ma. Um, uh, what do you say? Now, this isn't ne now in, in every case the statistic isn't necessarily very meaningful, but it does give you something to think about that you and and, and any other way any new dimension in which to look at your writing and it leads you to think about it again and like I said the other day. Uh, uh, sometimes it's just that I want to that I, the paragraph didn't break very well, or I ha or I you know I want to I want to get something on it to face a face another illustration. So I'll look at a paragraph a little closer than I would ordinarily look at, and then I'll think of a better way to say that sentence. So so that's the main value of these exercises, I think. Um, now sentence types, uh, and we have four kinds of sentences um, in this classification: simple, complex, and so on. And uh, uh, the church finally got one in the simple category when I added a few more, uh, a few, few more uh, lines in there. But they, he tended to go into uh, um, the uh, complex more, well, 44 percent. But anyway, but pretty much uh, the other ones are uh, are uh, you show a, dis a distribution, and, and you should have a variety, I think. In these, uh, notice Harold and Maud was the way it was was the most off scale had had 60 percent simple sentences. Um, that was, of course, appropriate to the to the uh, the style of the of this opening part of his book, um, short story. So now uh, <clears throat> he said that Harold and Ma was his master's thesis at UCLA in in, in film, and then he, then uh, it was made into the the real the real film later on, expanded from his from his prototype, and then and the short story all came later. Uh, he gave a lecture at Stanford a couple of years ago. Now let's see, word usage. Verb types. Um, I never was able to understand this, uh, the, 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 the write-up there, so I'm not going to go on and explain what it is because I'm not sure what it means. Well, auxiliary verbs, I know what these are. These are like was, I mean, has been, or something have. These extra words that you put in will. Um, but I don't think that's terribly relevant. What do we got here? Anything significant? Church has a lot more to be verbs. My my kids in high school were had to write essays that. They weren't allowed to use to, to be in uh, any of the verbs like is, are, was, are, you know, have been. Um, and uh, they had to ha always have some real verb that, that did something in it instead. It's very hard to do. I don't um, surprise, but fairly good exercise, I suppose. Um, passives, passive voice, 44% uh, in church. That, that was definitely a high compared to all the others, if, as you'll notice. And uh, no, but notice that the, the examples of, of uh, writing from from uh, the classics, you know, Withering Heights, Grimm, and all this, very low. Almost never did they use passive voice. Maybe it's because they're writing a novel <laughs> instead of a instead of a exposition. Huh? Maybe we can say that. Okay. Ah. <clears throat> um, types of words and. Uh, don't see anything particularly. Uh, now, the one thing you, you, if we apply the principles that Tuft had for presenting data, you would see that the, that there would be much more effective ways to present the to present this than the way Style does. And in fact, there are other Unix programs that have been written that take the output of Style and then uh, then present it in a better way. And so they parse the output, you know, the way in Unix you pipe two, two programs together, and, and so so style has been written, and no one wants to change that. But they'll, so they they run it, and then they take the output, and then they and then they present uh, um, ways that are more effective at it. But that's in um, in newer versions of Unix we don't have. Um, okay, so uh, uh, I don't see wide differences here. This is a small number of adjectives in Grimm's fairy tales. Mark Twain did not like adjectives. He seems to have recommended that uh, you, 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 you avoid adjectives work most of the time and just have nouns and verbs and good old adverbs. He didn't like adjectives. Um, <clears throat> sentence beginnings, I think there was something here. Uh, it says, how, how often did a sentence begin with a, a noun or noun phrase? And uh, the percentages tend to be more than half. But uh, but uh, here this was possibly significant. See, Tracy started 86% of her sentences in that in that handout with with noun phrases, and uh, so this might you know this might imply that maybe uh, maybe that's too 
too automatic to start with, to start every sentence with a noun and, try, and uh, a little more variety could be gained by by uh, uh, you know 86 percent is pretty is pretty high compared to these other 70 70 is, is reasonably high but 80 is much higher than that it's pretty far off scale there otherwise they were uh, the church almost never started with a noun phrase <laughs> maybe too low who knows um, starting with a preposition adverb um, and so uh, this uh, is, if we just have almost never starting with a verb here <laughs> kind of rare and I didn't take this statistics about expletives which I didn't think were great uh, of great importance but they, they were kind of low in all cases so I didn't have room for it on the page okay so anyway you get to look at these at these things in a, in a slightly different uh, along slightly different dimensions when you when you see an output like this but there's another program besides style called diction and uh, diction will will uh, well let me show you this they they have a list of 450 phrases that they look for that uh, are possible uh, no nos <clears throat> And so, uh, yeah, can you zoom in? Can you zoom in on these here? You see. So you look for things like full and complete, generally agreed, good and, got to, gratuitous, greatly minimized, head up, help best, help in the production of, okay, hopeful, wow, and you know, and also anything that contains the. So if you said hopefully, it would flag it. Uh, now you can ask you can the gratuitous yes right so now you can now then there's a program called explain which will explain what it thinks what it suggests you to do but now here so here's a so anyway, I ran it on my my first binomial coefficient thing which I which I wrote uh, you know uh, in the 60s before I was 30 years old and and it came out with um, uh, well here's here's the output of diction so you get an idea. so you look at some of my sentences here it is a simple manner to count the note the total bracket number of this is where they where they caught me um, k combinations of n objects and, and uh, this colon for them does not con <laughs> does not stop the sentence in the addiction program but it continues on and so they they think it's all one one long sentence but they stopped after the exclamation point which is not the end of a sentence in this case because I'm talking about factorial okay so anyway uh, uh, but this was a sentence that they thought they caught me by saying number of okay and then blah the quantity blah is called a binomial coefficient they have an extraordinary number of applications I'm hung up on this phrase number of number of there must be something bad about it okay then it says this treatise was significant because it was one of the first works on probability theory uh, they, they maybe suggest that I if I say one of the I should I should find some better phrase okay here's due to this I got to talk about the earliest known appearance of binomial coefficients in a 10th century commentary due to Halayudla on a, that's I don't know anyway on an ancient hint now um, am I the only person in the world who uses due to in this sense I wasn't able to find it in in, in the dictionary um, they say due to means because or or something a, a debt that you owe uh, to be paid and like money but nobody ever used it says due to in the sense of somebody was the inventor of it uh, what everybody does this in mathematical writing and there's no better way to say it but but uh, what you had a better way a theorem due to so-and-so everybody but the diction it wasn't in the dictionary this long you know and and uh, yeah okay Phew, thank you for, for this but but now you, uh, but if you it, so so do to is one of these things that now you see uh, in the um, in the uh, tech the program and uh, and the textbook and so on the, the Addison Wesley copy editor every time I used do to she 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 changed it and then I had to change it back um, owing to or something uh, it was terrible I mean yeah there was just no there was no yeah this is this is the this is the uh, uh, stylish, comfortable, uh, elegant way to refer to somebody, uh, to, to refer to, to, to who invented a concept, it seems to me. Uh, you can often say buyer of. Yeah, yeah, but this is better, I think. Okay, so anyway, due to is complaining about here. They're going to want me to change it to because. Now, you, can, you, you know that use of, of due to, you know, when, when somebody says due to the bad circumstances or something like that you could say because of something they, they prefer that but 
Okay, now, in about, okay, now here it says there. You give a very clear exposition. So every time I use the word very, it's going to flag it. Um, and uh, I, I read once a, a good a good algorithm for getting rid of varies in, if, you, if you overuse them in your, in your writing. The first thing you do is you change it to damn everywhere. <laughs> you know, so you say, he gave a damn clear exposition of binomial preferences. <laughs> And then, and then you, then you, then you, then you delete the word "damn," <laughs> and it says so it works like a charm. <laughs> okay. So, um, but now look at the next one. <clears throat> the ri- this one? No, no. I, I would have. Um, I, I don't overuse it. In fact, what what they did was. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm saying. Uh, I'm saying that that some people think you should never use the word very because it's because it's like nice. It just doesn't have any. It doesn't really convey any force anymore. Really and and if, if but if if so so yeah so so maybe I would change it back to very if, if I really believe that I ought to have a, a something in there. Yeah. But if I say you gave a clear exposition, I I wouldn't. It, would, it doesn't give the point that I want to do. So I, I, as long as I'm not overusing, I think it's okay. Now here, the next one you see what it caught here is a. Um, is a wicked witch, and um, enough said. <clears throat> but it does pick those out. If it looks, if, if they're pre- preceded by a comma, or it, it's okay. Yeah. Um, literally, they don't like the word literally. Um, binomial coefficients satisfy literally thousands of identities. Well, this particular sentence I've seen quoted in several other books. It's, it, other people seem to have been have liked it. Yeah. Um, now, in fact, they don't like that. In order to, I'll. Got to have that, but which I'm, I'm caught. Okay, and so on, so on, and so on. Uh, very. And a number of senses, 280, 45 phrases found among 280 senses in my in, in the draft. Now I did the same thing on binome two, and uh, and in this time, uh, 107 sentences, 10 phrases found. So uh, I was getting fewer than 10 percent instead of uh, something like uh, whatever. Uh, 30, 20, 30 um, percent, uh, at least over the years. That, that's that's been a change. But they still complain about number of. Here they say the order of. Um, but they're 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 reflecting a different misuse of the phrase the order of. Now, <clears throat> um, uh, uh, and and now the. Uh, they said that when, when they first installed this diction program, they kept, they kept statistics about what the users did, and they found that the users would, cha- would, would make the suggested changes about 50% of the time. So in other words, the diction flags something, and then you go look at it and say, do I, do I really want, uh, do I really mean this, or would I rather change it? And about half the time, people actually, actually thought that it, that it was going to, it was going to be an improvement. But certainly not nowhere like, uh, like 80% of the time would they think, would they agree, uh, with the thing. Now, there's another program called Explain. And um, and it just asks you for a phrase, and then you can you can you can t- talk of phrases that I had in here. I must have had assuming that right here, assuming that n is an integer, and and so I said a, um, a phrase assuming that it says use if for assuming that. So I you know, I try it says if n is an integer. Uh, phrase actually it says use really for actually. Okay, so I said here the empty integers in this table are actually zeros, and so I. Thought maybe uh, maybe it might be better to say really zero. So I went back to the manuscript and I looked at this and I think and I was about to change it in the file and then I said no I like actually better. Uh, it really make it gets my phrase across. But I did, you know I thought maybe they had one for me here. In terms of says use about instead of in terms of. Hopefully avoid usually a misplaced modifier. No comparatively avoid unless really comparing. Okay. No, I didn't know how to get out of the program. So, so, so. Um, but, uh, all right. but, uh, okay, so so that's the explain program, and and actually I typed uh, at one point I typed e, which, and it gave me every it gave me almost its whole database on everything that it would suggest, you know, and some of the suggestions will, will sometimes hit the mark. All right, any questions before I? Oh yeah, I want to make. I got an announcement. That is, uh, uh, on your term papers, you had different kinds of marks, and the ones that are in red are are, are due to me. So if you're wondering who to hate for certain <laughs> comments on it, it's my fault. And if you don't understand what these marks mean, uh, or if you like more clarification as to why in heck I made them, uh, please come see me after class now or next Wednesday. I'm I'm going to be out of town.
uh, with our guest speaker on Monday, but I, I won't be here. Um, so, uh, but I'm, I am willing to uh, to actually defend my my comments to you and and uh, and show why I why I, why I made them. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.